I don't entirely regret this purchase, but I'm definitely not happy with it. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Straight Down the Middle. My name is Kerry Hardy, and I talk and do everything pinball. So if that sounds interesting to you, then hit that subscribe button down below. I bought another Last Action Hero. Now, you may be going, Kerry, why? You already own a pretty good, decent-looking Last Action Hero, for those of you that know me well. And the reason behind this purchase is essentially to get parts that I believe could be better than what are on my machine. So the point of this purchase was to buy it simply for part swapping and then selling the machine to somebody else that wants it as a project machine. Because I'm going to tell you right now, this is a project machine. From my perspective at least, there are many of you that I think that would take this game as is and have no problems with it, but for me, this is a project machine. This was a purchase where when I handed the money over, I didn't feel good about it because I knew that I was paying too much for what I was getting. And I was like, damn this sucks, but damn it, there are parts on this machine that I could use on mine that would improve mine. So I'm gonna end up taking a little bit of a hit whenever I sell this last action hero, but I'm taking it as a little bit of a trade for parts that are not being reproduced. When I got there and went over the machine, there was a quite a few more issues than were disclosed in the description of the machine. Now this happens quite often, and a lot of the times the seller will be like, okay, I understand the issues, I'll do a little bit better on the price. Not this seller. This seller was like, this is how much I want for it. And if you don't want to pay that, then you can leave. Now, if I didn't need parts for my machine that I saw were better on this one, then I would have been like, okay, good luck to you. I bid you adieu. Not to mention it was a little bit of a drive for me. What I'm going to do is get this machine back on all fours and we're going to go through it. And I'm going to give you a little bit of the mindset of what goes through my head whenever I'm purchasing a game and taking notes of what I see wrong or what will need to be fixed. Now I want to preface this before I start digging into this machine going over all the flaws. I want to make sure you are aware that I'm going to be a little more pickier than those of you out there. Some of these are obvious defects, others were a little bit more difficult to catch. So let's get this puppy started. Back on all fours. Alright, first up, our first issue is going to be dealing with the legs and leg levelers. Now this has uh, obviously been repainted. Now the camera's probably not going to pick up the uh, subtle um, obvious notes of how it's been done, but it's got little touch-up marks here and there that you can see, uh, and not to mention it looks like they painted it with the leg leveler still on here because this is uh, black. Uh, now, what, su what sucks about this is that this thing is rusted into the leg itself, and you can't just twist because of that bullshit. So this is going to be an interesting little thing to get out, and there's a little trick to getting these things out because uh, this is not an easy task. So we're going to have to go a little uh, hardcore on here, and maybe you'll learn something. Okay, so here's the setup. We've got the leg, the leg leveler, pair of bias grips attached to the nut that is on the leg leveler, and we've got a couple of C-clamps clamping this thing down on a somewhat sturdy uh, table. Now, we're gonna be blowtorching and heating this stuff up. Uh, first off, we need to get ourselves protected. So, I'm going to be using just some regular gloves that should help protect me from any kind of heat and safety glasses. Now I'm heating up the bolt as well as the leg portion. Now 
This, all this heat is going to cause this metal to expand and will usually loosen things up to where this stuff should come right out. requires a good amount of muscle. Wouldn't surprise because I'm going to have to heat it up again. Daddy, yapper, mommy get some on my bad gummy. Okay. Mm. And there you are. Now, that's how you remove rusted old leg leveler from your leg. Now, let's go do the other three. And now for my next trick, we're going to install the new leg levelers. Now, I see these on other people's machines, and I keep seeing people do this wrong. Now, you're thinking, how do you install leg levelers wrong, Carrie? I mean, what? how is that possible? Well, I'll tell you what. God damn, it's going to take me forever to get this damn thing off. But, like, essentially what people tend to do, and what the person did on this last action hero is that they take this nut off then they install this damn thing and they're like all right now time to put this nut up here yeah now it ain't going anywhere no, that, if, if you think about it, that makes no sense, guys. That makes no sense for us to put a nut up right here. Like, it's accidentally gonna, like, whoops, come right out. If this thing can accidentally come out of here, then you've got bigger problems, okay? That is not how you put the damn leg levelers on. So if you have it on your machine like that, do yourself a favor and fix that issue unless you maintain your machines and they don't rust. But when they rust over, that makes it even more difficult. That's why I had such a hard time on one of these damn legs because they had the damn things installed wrong. So, I'm gonna put this on here. These are the front ones because they're the shorter ones, so I'm just gonna bring this thing all the way down to the bottom. Good. Now, one of the helpful things of putting it on the bottom like this, guys, is so that way you're like, all right, I found my perfect position. I can tighten that right there, and now this thing isn't going to be able to, like, move. Once you tighten that right there where you like it, then this thing is snug as a bug in a rug. Then you're good. That's the point of having it on this other end. So I'm going to loosen that up, bring it all the way back down to the bottom. Bam. Front leg done. All right, something just as important as your side art or anything else in the machine is just is the bottom of the machine. And this is one of the things that I've noticed is that we've got a lot of damage around the base perimeter on the bottom of this cabinet. All the way around, especially down around here by the legs, all the way up, a lot of damage right all around here. But bottom seems to be pretty sturdy. Like it, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if some of this might be even a little bit of water damage. But luckily, it's not completely falling apart. A lot of this can be sealed up and even repaired. So, but yeah, just something to note. All right, 
that's something to take note of whenever you're assembling your machine is that your leg bolts should not be able to free roam about so chances are i'm gonna have to get a new leg bracket for the inside of this cabinet let's see if i can yeah i can't tighten it all the way up so yeah that sucks so i'm gonna try to tighten it up to where it's at least got some there had to hand tighten it there we go got the front legs on all right, let's go around the topper area. Now, this is unobtainium right here, okay? For this machine, you cannot find this topper available. There are no repros. As of this time, as of this moment, there are no repros for any portion of this topper. So to get one in this decent of shape is uh, not bad. Mine's actually in better condition than this one is. So, ow! I get a splinter. So, anyways, size of a little scuff right here, probably from being moved around or hitting somebody's ceiling because this is a very tall topper machine. Um, it's obviously been touched up with some silver paint. I can see the paint run marks. You should be able to see a little bit of that in the uh, picture. So, uh, the guy did a, 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 a decent job. It's not that bad. I mean, unless of close observation, you would catch it and see that kind of stuff. But overall, it's not that bad. He's got a repro sticker for his topper right here. We'll get a better look at that in a little bit. Uh, red portion. Looks to be pretty good. Not that bad. Not that bad at all. Uh, we've got some damage right here in the back. This looks like it's a little bit of water damage as well. Or someone's been roughing around with this damn machine whenever they've been loading it up and stuff. Chances are this is a routed game, and there's going to be some telltales in this to basically give it away that it was a routed game. All right, let's have a, a good close-up look on the underside of this machine. Um, this could definitely use a good sanding. I mean, it's got all kinds of roughness on here and other hard crap. Looks like it's even been drugged through the mud at one point. But we've also got a lot of splitting damage down here that's been someone has tried to take a little bit of uh, precautions on by stapling it but it's already broken through uh, a lot of wear around the leg portion here and a really large amount of leg wear on this portion right here and then once again someone's already tried to uh, assist in it not falling completely apart with a screw right there so uh Another failed attempt at repairing. Just put some tape on there. That fixes everything. No. There's another tip. Tape is not a good repair. All right. Let's get these legs back on. All right, so we've got it up all on all fours. And uh, what I want to do is essentially just start from the top and then work our way down uh, going through the machine and seeing what all we find. Uh, so we've already gone over the topper from what we can see from behind, but as you can see from the front, you may or may not be able to see it, but essentially the front looks very good. I mean, from a standing point of just playing the game, uh, no one would be the wiser if any repairs have been done to the topper, so the topper is actually in pretty good condition. So we're going to go on and move to the trans line. No burn-ins from uh, incandescent bulbs or anything. They've all been done in a frosted white, so thumbs up on that. That is the way to go. Frosted white on your trans light is your best visual effect when it comes to colors and light disbursement. So, but I can see that the uh, trans light is definitely sticking or has been stuck to the glass. Now, we can try removing these panels on the side right here and seeing if it actually is something that's like stuck to it underneath it. Um, but I can see all through right here, here, and all down here, it looks like it's stuck to the glass and it should not be like that. So uh, 
that's something to keep an eye out for because a lot of the times if you try removing it, the art will come with it. So I'm not going to touch that right now. All right, so here we are on the uh, boards. And uh, some of the concerns that I first saw when I looked in this machine was all of the tape. Uh, at first, I thought he had a whole bunch of cut wires. Uh, but then I noticed that basically this was a form of organization that uh, a lot of people use whenever they are removing the boards from the cabinet. Uh, just so that way they know for sure where they all go back. So I'm all for that. Not to mention he used some just regular old painter's tape so it can easily be removed. So uh, I am thankful for that. Uh, there is a new X-Pen power supply. So that's also a thumbs up on that. Uh, although X-Pen power supplies, uh, you may or may not have issues with your 12 volt rail going to your soundboard. Something to keep an eye out for if you do have that. Uh, they're kind of known for having that issue of delivering 12 volts, a solid 12 volts to your sound. So if you ever happen to get a, let's say like uh, that, uh, the pin soundboard, then chances are you're going to need to get an auxiliary adapter to make sure that you have a good solid 12 volts going to your soundboard due to this power supply. Other than that, great power supply. Uh, going on to the MPU. Uh, here we have no batteries, but he has the NVRAM installed, so you know, that's a, another thumbs up. Very dirty and uh, rusted looking up ribbon cable on here. It's just a little weird, but uh, let's move on to pulling this down. So, let's look at the boards here. All the boards look in pretty good shape. I mean, there's no red flags that I'm seeing on any of these boards. I don't see any drastic uh, issues with new transistors from burnout. A lot of, in one of the areas that you want to look at is up here. This is uh, where your solenoids for your flippers and everything are, and if there's any kind of flipper issues with one frying or constantly on, then chances are there your, then there's your problem. Uh, let's see here, as far as switches and lamps, I uh, don't see any new transistor. My resistor, resistor networks seem to be good. So it looks like all the transistors are OEM, so we haven't had any uh, switch issues that have resorted in changing transistors. Uh, nothing new on these boards. Um, don't need to if they work just fine with these uh, TIP 36Cs. Uh, I'm going to keep those. Uh, there's an upgraded version of those. They're a little more rugged, but I'm not going to worry about it. Those are just fine. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Everything looks good in here. I'm not drawing any big red flags or any major concerns with anything that I'm seeing in the back box and that is a plus. So lots of pluses on here. Alright, let's power the sucker on. I'll be back. Okay, so one of the things I noticed whenever purchasing this game is that there was no missing dots on the DMD. Uh, it's all well lit, uh, so that was also something that was really nice to have. A good DMD is always a big perk. Uh, some of the things I've noticed that were done to the machine that are not original or typically what you would see on this machine, uh, or any DE for that matter, is that uh, it looks like... I'll have to get the camera down here so you can see it. But the lockdown receiver, as well as the portions that the lockdown receiver from the play field are, are very clean. The, they've actually been painted. Just so happens that they've been painted the same color as the topper that we mentioned earlier. So chances are this was done the same time as the topper was done. So this is not a standard OEM. But it's a nice touch though. I mean, props that it does look good. So, good to that. 
So um, they also have a trough LED portion right here that glows. That's not OEM. Uh, let's go ahead and just put all the, uh, like I said, we're going to start from the top and work our way down. So I'm not going to put the pinballs in there just yet. Because this game is notorious for when you let the play up build up, balls come rolling out. So let's go over this play field and do a walk around and see what I'll be found. So overall, the LED job that the individual did on this machine is decent. I've seen a lot worse. It's not bad. Um, the, the choice was pretty good. So starting from the top here, the typical wear that you're going to see on this machine is a lot of wear on the buck. When that ball comes up here, and you're going to see a lot of missing paint. That's just typical. Uh, let's see, looking around some more. These rubbers are decent, not too bad. I don't think any of the rubbers have been changed on this machine now that I think about it. Yeah, none of these rubbers have been changed. These are all standard OEM. So, got chip plastic right here. Yeah, let's see back here. One of the big issues is the ramp. My goodness, I have never seen one this beat up. This is an indication of it being a routed game. I mean, this thing's probably got a lot of plays on it, but you've got this whole section right here missing, as well as this entire section right here missing. It's just been beat up, and that's all loose. Hell, I wonder if that's even screwed in underneath the play field. My lord, that has got a lot of wiggle room in it. All right, let's see what else we got here. So this is not standard. This is a this is a remake. Someone on Penn's side is doing uh, remakes of these, and uh, it's not bad. I mean, it's better than nothing, obviously, but the blue is not blue enough, in my opinion. It doesn't match with the rest of the blue on the game. I mean, it's not a bad, but... So then we have this spinner right here that doesn't freely spin very well. It's got the new sticker decal that an individual on pin side is making, but that should be free spinning like nobody's business, and it is not. So that's going to need to be adjusted. More than likely, it's because it's been painted white, and that's going to have to be probably sanded off to give it the ability to freely spin around. I can already see little chips of the white paint that are on the edges right here digging away at it. Little flakes down here. Uh, there's clippies on here, more than likely. I'm sure it needed it. Uh, yeah, because this portion of the clippies already starting to come up. And that's going to catch a ball. That switch doesn't fully submerge down. That's going to catch a ball at the right moment, or the wrong moment, I should say. So that's going to need to be adjusted. That's going to have to be pushed down. Um, this is a big issue. Uh, this ramp has been rebuilt. I say this ramp, I mean this scoop. This is not standard. This has got some welding right here. I'm not sure, but someone did some TIG welding on this. But it is like missing a good portion of the scoop. I mean, you can tell the difference between this scoop, which is correct. Let me try to walk out the lights. This scoop is correct. That scoop is not. Let's see what else we got. And this is this is it right here, guys. This is the unobtainium for this game is this damn tar pit. And what sucks about this damn thing is one, it's not being remade, but it's very common to get broken. And the reason behind why it's so common to get broken is that when you lift this play field up and you lean it against the back box like everyone does because that's just the way it's designed, this thing can be broken by 
being against the back box. So this is one of the pieces that I really needed for my game is because this damn thing is broken on mine. So I'm going to clean that up and then put that on mine because that one's intact. Uh, two of my crane targets are missing right here. But he gave me a whole new set because he had them ready to go. So a whole new set is ready to go on these things. Uh, which sucks because I've already bought a new set for mine. So, all right. And let's go down this side some more. A little bit of a busted plastic right here on the edge. The usual missing portions on the slingshots. Yep, right there and right there. Let's see here. Playfield is in really good shape. A really common wear spot on this game is when the ball exits the multi-ball scoop. And when it shoots out, it skims across this portion of the play field and it will wear a little a straight line on this ticket right about here. And it's very common on this machine. So when you see this game, a lot of the times you're gonna see a little white mark because that ball, the way it, this is a very, very common important scoop to hit in this game. So it's gonna come out of there and it makes a big old wear mark on there. This has got, looks like it's been taped down. So yeah. That's silly. I'm going to have to pull that up, and chances are that chicken tax is going to come with it. So I'll have to do a water slot decal to replace that. Uh, all these seem decent. Uh, when it comes to LEDs, it looks like he's got a mixture of frosted as well as clear white LEDs. So not too bad, unless you use white. Uh, these cliffies are in pretty good shape overall these actually seem a little thicker than uh, your typical ones all right going around the uh, shooter lanes not too bad typical little wear spot there uh, he's got the really good laminated version of these I think I'm going to take those because the ones I've got are these, but they're not the nice shiny gloss laminated ones. So I'm going to snag those two. Uh, let's see here. Other than that, play feels not horrible. Um, broken plastic piece right there. Actually, no, it's not broken. LEDs out on this one. Chances are the person didn't want to uh, disassemble, because in order to change this LED on this one, it is a pain in the ass. Uh, you have to remove this ramp in order to get to that damn screw right there. So, yeah. Chances are that LEDs burn out, but the person was like, what, I gotta, no. <laughs> yeah, so that that's uh, probably what happened there while that's not been changed. All right, so that's the play field. Let's uh, take a gander at underneath. All right, so let's start from the coin door area. He's obviously got a new lock on there. And we'll work our way around. Do, do, do. Got a loose screw down there. For some reason, he's got the uh, tilt bobber upside down. All right, someone doesn't like the tilt. Uh, I don't like this. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Flipper board. Oh, what the fudge. Yep. So, this is pretty typical. All right, guys. So, on Data East, their fuse clips are total shit. Okay. And <laughs> chances are, instead of replacing these fuses, they decided to solder them into the fuse clips. <sighs> Look at this. That, that fixes the problem temporarily, so 
gonna have to replace all those fuse clips because if a fuse ever happens to go out then that's a pain in the ass to replace now because that's another indication that this machine was on route because a lot of the times when something like that goes wrong they just need the thing to work so do whatever you can to get the machine working get it back to making money so So at least it's down here. It's not in the back box area. That's where I would draw some major concerns. Uh, around here. Everything looks pretty in order right here. I don't know why they went with blue buttons. That's weird. Okay. So let's start from the bottom of the play field and work our way up. Do, do, do. It's got some nice flashers in here. He's got the freaking really bright one right there. There's that switch that's gonna have to be adjusted. Pulled down some more. And then here's that god-awfully loose target right there. It's going to have to be tightened up. Can't see the other side, so we'll just go up this side for right now. Looks like this solenoid's been changed in the past. That's another thing for this game, guys, is that this machine has a, a real common problem with these solder points on these switches going out because a lot of vibration this this thing's not even screwed in all the way goodness gracious but it's not going anywhere so but a lot of vibration comes from the center scoop which causes a lot of the solder joints and the switches to go bad and I want to say whenever I test played it the chicken scoop was not working so Chances are that switch is faulty or it needs to be adjusted. <sighs> Magnet control board, also a very common problem for this game, but uh, all three of them worked for this machine. So this was uh, actually a good board and props to him for having it. Fuses aren't soldered in for the magnets, so that's good. He's got alligator clip for his trough lighting. And it looks like this one's been replaced at one point. This is standard. But looks like a flipper rebuild kit was done, so yay, that's good. So let's take a look on the other side. Mm. There's those broken switches or broken uh, drop targets. Another common thing for this game for the break. No burn areas on the magnets, all the original magnets. Alright. I don't see any other red flags. Let's lower this play field down a little bit. So upon lowering this down, let's get a look at the trough area and see if you can notice anything. Did you catch it? Yeah. Still clicks, but it doesn't roll over. So that's going to need to be replaced. That's going to cause issues. You need to be able to roll that ball for your trough, and that's going to cause issues. The ball cannot be backed up for whatever reason moving around and that's not gonna that's gonna cause issues no bueno and it's gonna scratch up the ball over time too that's gonna be no bueno all right 
Looks like this switch has had some. Well, I don't like the way that's soldered on there. That's kind of messed up. I'm going to redo that. All right. So let's uh, get the balls in there. All right, let's start a game. That solenoid fires almost every time I fire one of my flippers. Checking all my solenoids. We're gonna see if the chicken scoop works. It just thought I lost a ball. It just ejected another ball out. So I've got one ball in my hand. Let's lose this ball. Back in the trough area. Let's see if it does that again. Okay. So a ball is now in there. And I've got another ball in my hand. Let's check some switches here. Pop bumper works, but it's not as sensitive as it needs to be, so we'll have to adjust that as well. Both end lanes work. Multi ball is ready to go. That lane works. That lane works. See? That ball can get stuck underneath that spinner like I was telling you. Now let's try up here. Yep. Ball gets stuck right there too. Let's try to hit the chicken skip again. So it doesn't even detect the switch in between there. Alright, 
side right there. Alright, we're back in regular game mode. Let's see if the ripper works. The ripper works good. Let's get an extra ball. Try that chicken scoop again. Thanks, I just ended the game. We have got a switch matrix issue. Switch is working, it just needs to be cleaned up. Ow! Alright, so that's working. Shaker motor is working, so that's also a plus. Come back later. What I'm mainly trying to see here Come back later. is how sporadic the switch issue is. Come back later. Alright, so. To be or not to be. Yeah. Chances are the reason why it's so sporadic is because the shaker motor that shakes this game is sometimes connecting things that shouldn't be connected, giving me the false readings on my switches. So this game needs to be gone through 100% when it comes to the switches to make sure the diodes are facing the right direction and that nothing is touching anything else that it's not supposed to be touching. So that's essentially where we're at on this game. And it looks like I was wrong about the DMD. I'm missing a bar. Two bars. These last two rows, last two columns don't like. Damn it. All right, so let's have a look at the cabinet, shall we? The cabinet art, that's something else that we need to go over. And that is that it's, you know, got some scuffs here and there. Um, but the main thing is the, the fading and it's just on this top portion right here and uh, everything else seems to be pretty solid when it comes to color quality at least but it's the fading right here that's a bummer uh, like I said that's not a, a big thing to a lot of people uh, I'm just pointing out any defects that need to be dealt with when it comes to restoration uh, so chances are your best bet is some new decals. Uh, you got a lot of fade and wear around your start button. These are all indications of a routed game when it comes to fade because a lot of the times they just set them near the windows or wear it and as long as it's bringing the money, they don't care. And all this wear around the start button, that indicates a lot of plays. Uh, let's see here. And we've got fade on this top portion of the side art as well. And some scuff marks throughout. And same goes for the other side as well. And of course your usual leg wear that will be up behind these legs. Uh, then we're gonna go to the coin door. Coin door itself is in pretty good shape. Uh, although I'm missing the coin pictures and diagrams right here that go right here. They're just a plain plastics. Uh, let's see here, 
This button has got a lot of wear on it as well. And gun's not in too bad a shape. But yeah, so that's essentially it right there, guys. So that's what I've got to work with. And so now it's a matter of going through it and uh, figuring out what I could use. And that's something else that I want to go over that I almost forgot was how well the uh, the balls roll down this right here. And this thing has been altered and bent. I have no idea why. But I'm guessing at some point in time they figured they needed to or had to. When this ball comes down here, it like does a little wiggle thing. And then it finally flops down here where it's supposed to go. And then it's just not right. So that needs to be basically reformed. That should hopefully have been back in place without having to uh, break any of the uh, welding points on there. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get that fixed where it's a nice smooth transition. Um, every other wire form seems to be working pretty good. So that's where we're at on this game. Uh, I'm really not looking forward to going through that switch matrix. Those things can be a real pain in the ass sometimes. But maybe I might make that another video as well. So without a doubt, this game is salvageable. It's definitely playable. It just needs a little tweaks here and there when it comes to Switch Matrix, and the game is essentially 100% playable. So my plans for this machine are to, one, swap out the parts that are better cosmetically than mine, uh, two, go over the Switch Matrix 100% to make sure everything is working appropriately, including replacing that trough switch that does not have a roll over on it. Tighten up the cat post on next to the ramp. Tweak that top left pop bumper including replacing the bulb that is in there so it will actually light up. And then once this game works 100% then I will sell it to anybody who wants to buy it. I'm just looking to get my money back. I mean I'm, I'm willing to take a small hit obviously because of the condition of the machine and I'm not out for profit. So other than the things that I mentioned and point out during this video was there anything that I might have missed that you caught? If you did let me know down below. If you like what you saw or maybe you even learned something give me that thumbs up to let me know. And as always do not forget to hit that subscribe button and ding our dong that way you can be notified of whenever we upload new content for your viewing pleasure. Until next time guys, peace out.